A giant lumbering figure rose up in the bunker entrance, tall and swaying. Hendrix paused, amazed. A man, a soldier, with one leg supporting himself with a crutch. Major! Tasso's voice came. More firing. The huge figure moved forward, David swarming around it. Hendrix broke out of his freeze. The first variety, the wounded soldier. He aimed and fired. The soldier burst into bits, parts and relays flying. Now many Davids were out on the flat ground, away from the bunker. He fired again and again, moving slowly back, half crouching and aiming. From the rise, Klaus fired down. The side of the rise was alive with claws making their way up. Hendrix retreated toward the rise, running and crouching. Tasso had left Klaus and was circling slowly to the right, moving away from the rise. A David slipped up toward him, its small white face expressionless, brown hair hanging down in its eyes. It bent over suddenly, opening its arms. Its teddy bear hurtled down and leaped across the ground, bounding toward him. Hendrix fired. The bear and the David both dissolved. He grinned, blinking. It was like a dream. Up here, Tasso's voice. Hendrix made his way toward her. She was over by some columns of concrete, walls of a ruined building. She was firing past him with the hand pistol Klaus had given her. Thanks, he joined her, gasping for breath. She pulled him back behind the concrete, fumbling at her belt. Close your eyes. She unfastened a globe from her waist. Rapidly, she unscrewed the cap, locking it into place. Close your eyes and get down. She threw the bomb. It sailed in an arc, an expert rolling and bouncing to the entrance of the bunker. Two wounded soldiers stood uncertainly by the brick pile. More Davids poured from behind them out onto the plain. One of the wounded soldiers moved toward the bomb, stooping awkwardly down to pick it up. The bomb went off. The concussion whirled Hendrix around, throwing him on his face. A hot wind rolled over him. Dimly, he saw Tasso standing behind the columns, firing slowly and methodically at the Davids coming out of the raging clouds of white fire. Back along the rise, Klaus struggled with a ring of claws circling around him. He retreated blasting at them and moving back, trying to break through the ring. Hendrix struggled to his feet. His head ached. He could hardly see. Everything was licking at him, raging and whirling. His right arm would not move. Tasso pulled back toward him. Come on. Let's go. Klaus, he's still up there. Come on! Tasso dragged Hendrix back, away from the columns. Hendrix shook his head, trying to clear it. Tasso led him rapidly away, her eyes intense and bright, watching for claws that had escaped the blast. One David came out of the rolling clouds of flame. Tasso blasted it. No more appeared. But Klaus, what about him? Hendrix stopped standing unsteadily. He... Come on! They retreated, moving farther and farther away from the bunker. A few small claws followed them for a little while, and then gave up, turning back and going off. At last Tasso stopped. If we can stop here and get our breaths, Hendrix sat down on some heaps of debris. He wiped his neck, gasping. We... we left Klaus back there! Tasso said nothing. 
She opened her gun, sliding a fresh round of blast cartridges into place. Hendrix stared at her, dazed. You left him back there on purpose. Tasso snapped the gun together. She studied the heaps of rubble around them, her face expressionless, as if she were watching for something. What is it? Hendrix demanded. What are you looking for? Is something coming? He shook his head, trying to understand. What was she doing? What was she waiting for? He could see nothing. Ash lay all around them. Ash and ruins. Occasional stark tree trunks without leaves or branches. What? Tasso cut him off. Be still. Her eyes narrowed. Suddenly her gun came up. Hendrix turned, following her gaze. Back the way they had come, a figure appeared. The figure walked unsteadily toward them. Its clothes were torn. It limped as it made its way along, going very slowly and carefully, stopping now and then, resting and getting its strength. Once it almost fell. It stood for a moment, trying to steady itself. Then it came on. Klaus. Hendrix stood up. Klaus! He started toward him. How the hell did you... Tasso fired. Hendrix swung back. She fired again, the blast passing him. A searing line of heat. The beam caught Klaus in the chest. He exploded. Gears and wheels flying. For a moment he continued to walk. Then he swayed back and forth. He crashed to the ground, his arms flung out. A few more wheels rolled away. Silence. Tasso turned to Hendrix. Now you understand why he killed Rudy? Hendrix sat down again slowly. He shook his head. He was numb. He could not think. Do you see? Tasso said. Do you understand? Hendrix said nothing. Everything was slipping away from him, faster and faster. Darkness rolling and plucking at him. He closed his eyes. Hendrix opened his eyes slowly. His body ached all over. He tried to sit up, but needles of pain shot through his arm and shoulder. He gasped. Don't try to get up, Tasso said. She bent down, putting her cold hand against his forehead. It was night. A few stars glinted above, shining through the drifting clouds of ash. Hendrix lay back, his teeth locked. Tasso watched him impassively. She had built a fire with some wood and weeds. The fire licked feebly, hissing at a metal cup suspended over it. Everything was silent. Unmoving darkness beyond the fire. So he was the second variety. Hendrix murmured. I had always thought so. Why didn't you destroy him sooner? He wanted to know. You healed me back. Tasso crossed to the fire to look into the metal cup. Coffee. It'll be ready to drink in a while. She came back and sat down beside him. Presently, she opened her pistol and began to disassemble the firing mechanism, studying it intently. This was a beautiful gun, Tasso said half aloud. The construction is superb. What about them? The claws? A concussion from the bomb put most of them out of action. They are delicate. Highly organized, I suppose. The Davids, too? 
years. How did you happen to have a bomb like that? Tasso shrugged. We designed it. You shouldn't underestimate our technology, Major. Without such a bomb, you and I would no longer exist. Very useful. Tasso stretched out her legs, warming her feet in the heat of the fire. It surprised me that you did not seem to understand after he killed Rudy. Why did you think he... I told you, I thought he was afraid. Really? You know, Major, for a little while I suspected you. Because you wouldn't let me kill him. I thought you might be protecting him. She laughed. Are we safe here? Hendrix asked presently. For a while, until they get the reinforcements from some other area. Tasso began to clean the interior of the gun with a bit of rag. She finished and pushed the mechanism back into place. She closed the gun, running her finger along the barrel. We were lucky, Hendrix murmured. Yes, very lucky. Thanks for pulling me away. Tasso did not answer. She glanced up at him, her eyes bright in the firelight. Hendrix examined his arm. He could not move his fingers. His whole side seemed numb. Down inside him was a dull, steady ache. How do you feel? Tasso asked. My arm is damaged. Anything else? Internal injuries. You didn't get down when the bomb went off. Hendrix said nothing. He watched Tasso pour the coffee from the cup into a flat metal pan. She brought it over to him. Thanks. He struggled up enough to drink. It was hard to swallow. His insides turned over and he pushed the pan away. That's all I can drink now. Tasso drank the rest. Time passed. The clouds of ash moved across the dark sky above them. Hendrix rested, his mind blank. After a while, he became aware that Tasso was standing over him, gazing down at him. What is it? he murmured. Do you feel any better? Some. You're no measure. If I hadn't dragged you away, they would have got you. You would be dead like Rudy. I know. Do you want to know why I brought you out? I could have left you there. Why did you bring me out? Because we have to get away from here. Tasso stirred the fire with a stick, peering calmly down into it. No human being can live here. When the reinforcements come, we won't have a chance. I've pondered about it while you were unconscious. We have perhaps three hours before they come. And you expect me to get us away? That's right. I expect you to get us out of here. Why me? Because I don't know anyway. Her eyes shone at him in the half light, bright and steady. If you can't get us out of here, they'll kill us within three hours. I see nothing else ahead. Well, Major, what are you going to do? I've been waiting all night. While you were unconscious, I sat here. 
waiting on, and, and listening. It's almost done. The night is almost over. <laughs>